Hello, and welcome to Annuities and Loans. This is part one, just the skills. We'll talk about the formulas, how to apply them. And then in part two, we'll look at the word problems. My name's Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. So our first formula uh, is a sinking fund. And now a sinking fund is a type of annuity uh, that earns compound interest into which we make periodic deposits. Some of you like saving up for a, a 529, saving up for your child's college fund. Maybe you're saving up for your retirement. Maybe you're making payments in to save up for buying a car with cash. So let's suppose that an account has an annual percentage rate of R compounded M times per year so that I equals R over M is the interest rate per compounding period. This is the same as we saw in compound interest. If you make a payment of PMT at the end of each period, then the future value after T years, or N equals M times T periods, will be given by future value equals the amount of your payment multiplied by the fraction in which the entire numerator, put in parentheses, which is 1 plus I to the N power, minus 1, and then we'll divide by I. I add the parentheses here. For those of you that are going to be using a calculator, if you're not using a calculator to do this, I'm in awe. But your calculator is only as smart as you are. So it's quicker, don't get me wrong. But it's only as smart as you are. So make sure you add the parentheses where you need them to be able to tell your calculator exactly what you want it to do. So let's find the future value of the sinking fund. $100 is deposited monthly for 10 years at 5% interest. And in these, we'll say that the amount that we, or the amount of time that we deposit monthly, it's the same as the compounding rate. So it's 5% per year, also compounded monthly. So my PMT is 100. That's the amount of my regular deposits. Monthly it happens 12 times a year. So my M value is 12. T equals 10 years, 5%. So my interest rate in decimal form is 0.05. We'll use R and M to make our I value, and I'll leave that as a fraction because my calculator can handle it. My N value monthly for 10 years gives me 120 total payments. I'll always find my N. Very rarely do I actually simplify my I because I don't want to round too early. So we'll put everything in our formula, FV equals 100, and then parentheses twice, 1 plus I, 0 0.05 over 12, close the parentheses to the power of 120, and then make sure you come out of the exponent before you type the minus 1. Close your parentheses ending the numerator. Divide it by I again. These parentheses aren't totally necessary, but it's a good habit to get into. Let the calculator do the work, and you'll find that in 10 years, you'll have $15,528.23. For my students at UTEP, keep in mind, this is not something you're going to do without a calculator. Bring your calculator to every class. Bring your calculator to every exam for sure. Number two, find the future value of the sinking fund. If we take $50, just something simple like $50 deposited monthly for 25 years at 3%, not necessarily what you would call an investment, but it's an account, a little bit better than putting money under your mattress. PMT is 50 monthly, so M equals 12. T equals 25, interest rate 3%, and decimal form is 0 0.03. Using these, we form I, which is R over M. And this is a terminating decimal, so I might use that in my uh, formula rather than using the fraction. It's up to you. N is monthly for 25 years, so that's 300 compounding periods. Substituting everything we know in our formula, FV equals 50. Parentheses around the entire numerator, 1 plus our I value. To the power of 300, come out of your exponent, subtract 1, close off the parentheses for the numerator. Divide by the I value, and you'll end up with $22,300 that you've saved up over the course of 25 years. $50 a month, not bad, but man, that's a long time to only have $22,000. I'd find a different investment if I were you. We can also find the payment of the sinking fund, and I show this in two different ways uh, in class. I'm going to keep the same exact formula, that way we're not looking at a whole bunch of different formulas here for the lecture video. This is not the same for my UTEP students that I showed you in class, but it has the same exact answer. 
We want $20,000 in a fund paying 4% per year with monthly payments for 10 years. We want, so in the future, right, we want 20,000. My interest rate is 4%. Monthly happens 12 times a year. T is 10 years. So now instead of knowing the payment, I know the future value. So I put the 20,000 on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Leave PMT because that's what I'm looking for. All right, find the PMT. Fill in all the rest of my values just as we did before. And now what I'll do is I'll find the value of this big fraction. And I'll use all the parentheses that I've typed here to find this value, 147.2498047. And I'll use as many decimals as my calculator displays. The more decimals you have here in accuracy, the more accurate in terms of uh, electronic grading, your answer is going to be at the end. And banks want you to be accurate when it comes to money. They want their money. So once I get 147.2498047 for this big fraction, notice that's PMT multiplied by the 147 number. So to get PMT by itself, I'm going to divide 20,000 divided by that whole string of numbers will give me a payment of $135.82. So if I want $20,000 in my child's education fund and I'm only going to be saving for 10 years because I wasn't on the ball when they were first uh, born, at 4%, if I pay in $135.82 monthly, then when they go to college, they could have $20,000. So, you know, they could buy a couple of books. Once again, we could find the payment. Uh, we want $100,000 in a fund paying 7% per year with quarterly payments for 20 years. Identify your variables. We want 100,000. Future value is 100,000. 7% in decimal form, 0 0.07. Quarterly happens four times per year for 20 years. Enter in all of our values, making sure we put FV on the left-hand side of the equal sign by itself. We do not know PMT, so we'll leave it. We'll find the value of the big fraction, this 171 number. I'm not going to read out all the decimals. If we knew the payment, we would finish by multiplying, but we don't, so we finish our steps by dividing 100,000 by 171 point stuff. That's the technical term for this number, stuff. And we'll find that we should put $582.09 quarterly, so we'll make that payment four times a year in order to have $100,000 saved up after 20 years. We also have a second formula. Now, the formula two is also an annuity. Remember, a sinking fund is an annuity, but an ordinary annuity is an account earning compound interest from which periodic withdrawals are made. So sinking fund, you're putting money in, you're making deposits. An ordinary annuity, I don't have the word ordinary written here, but I'm trying to say it enough so that you catch that. Ordinary annuity, periodic withdrawals are made. So now you're retired and you're collecting your retirement or you won the lottery and now you're collecting your winnings. This would be an ordinary annuity. Suppose that the account has an annual rate of R compounded M times per year so that I equals R over M is the interest rate per compounding period. Suppose also that the account starts with a balance of PV dollars. So on the day you retire, this is the amount in your retirement account. On the day you win that $586 million in Mega Millions, that's your present value. That's how much you won. If you receive a payment, PMT, at the end of each compounding period, and the account is down to $0 after T years, or N equals MT periods, then the present value is equal to the payment multiplied by our big fraction again, but notice the order has changed. This time it's 1 minus the stuff in parentheses, whereas the sinking fund, the order of that subtraction was changed. Also, for an ordinary annuity, we'll have a negative in the exponent. Think about it like this. A sinking fund has a positive exponent, and the 1 plus i is positive because the money is growing. An ordinary annuity, the 1 plus i is negative, and the exponent is negative because you're taking out money, so it's going down each time. And, you know, withdrawing money, that's a negative action, whereas saving up money, we tend to think of as a positive action. Otherwise, it's the same basic idea, same basic steps, but you have to pay attention to the details. 
So let's find the periodic withdrawals for the annuities given. Again, this is not the way I showed in class, but it is a secondary method that uh, some people might find easier. Find the peri periodic withdrawals for the annuities given, $100,000 at 3%, paid out monthly for 20 years. Periodic withdrawals, I want to find the PMT. So I know I have currently $100,000 maybe in lottery winnings. And I want to find how much I'm going to make each month. Enter my values, 1 minus parentheses, 1 plus I, right, 0 0.03 over monthly. Close the parentheses to the power of negative because this is an ordinary annuity. Monthly for 20 years, notice if I don't find my N ahead of time and call that what it is, which I believe is feeling like 300, then use parentheses in your exponent. Always tell your calculator, hey, consider these two together because it doesn't know if you don't tell it. So the negative for the exponent, the 12 times 20 I put in parentheses. Close the parentheses on my numerator, divide by I. So I find the value of my big fraction, 180 number, divide in order to finish it. Uh, if I won $100,000 and the lottery somehow had a 3% interest rate, paid out monthly for 20 years, I would earn $554.60 a month. That's not bad. Now, what if I win $25 million? But it's only 2% and it's paid out monthly for 20 years. Same idea, $25 million equals PMT times parentheses 1 minus and then my 1 plus i to the power of minus n or minus mt. Close the parentheses on the numerator, divide by i in order to find the value of our big fraction. To get PMT by itself, we're going to divide 25 million divided by 197.67403348. I use all those decimals here I don't round, I don't take a shortcut here because I want this exact answer at the end. I don't want to be off by a couple of dollars. Uh, if you're using online homework systems like we do at UTEP, off by a couple dollars makes for a wrong answer. And now you have to do all this work again and you can still end up with the wrong answer. Use all the decimals here, only round at the very end so you get a more exact answer. That's not bad. Win $25 million, get $126,470 a month. I'm buying a new car every month. That's what that looks like. Totally irresponsible, but hey, I won $25 million. Now, from a lender's point of view, a loan is an ordinary annuity. So we use the same formula. And if you prefer, you can just solve the original formula for PMT. PMT equals PV times I over parentheses 1 minus parentheses 1 plus i close parentheses to the negative n and we'll close parentheses for our entire denominator right because when you when you borrow money for a car from the lender's point of view that's the present value that's what's being paid and as you're making your payments from the lender's point of view those are are cutting down the amount of money you have each time hopefully getting it to zero before you choose to get another car so Loans are the same formulas as ordinary annuities. So let's find the periodic payments on the loans given. Suppose I want to borrow $10,000 at 9% for four years. This is uh, maybe a used car. You have really poor credit rating, but you want to get it paid off in four years. Let's see how much you would have to pay each month. $10,000 is the PV amount borrowed multiplied by I, 0 0.09 over 12 for monthly. My denominator, all in parentheses, I'll have 1 minus 1 plus I to the power of negative 48, right? Four years monthly payments. If you want to call it 12 times 4, make sure you use parentheses. If you want to call it 48, they're no longer necessary. But the calculator handles all of this. You don't have to find the value of your fraction. You don't even have to find the 48. When you put this entire thing in your calculator, you end up with payments of $248.85 a month for those four years. Last example here of this type, to find the periodic payment. Maybe this is a house loan, $150,000. I live in a great economy, by the way. We could buy houses for that amount of money. In fact, my students thought this was a little too much. So if you live outside of the Las Cruces, El Paso area, 
a great place to live. 150,000 borrowed at 5.6% for 30 years with monthly payments. My 150,000 is the present value. 5.6%, well, I know that 5 cents would be 0 0.05, and then the 6 just trails it. Monthly, all divided by, in parentheses, 1 minus, parentheses 1 plus i, to the power of negative 12 times 30. This is 360 payments you're going to make at $861.12 each. That's not bad. I know a lot of people that pay more rent than that. And in this, you'll actually end up with something of your own. So that's part one. If you want to know more about word problems, more than just uh, here's some facts, use the formula, check out part two.